You've got to hear this. God has placed awesome things in the creation account. God is incredible. What awesome things God has placed for us in the creation and in the creation account. In this video, we will be speaking about the third day. And that day when we read of the coming forth of the greenery, beloved, in the green, there's a prophecy of life. And in the creation account, there is the testimony not only of God creating in the earthly. We read thereof in Colossians, and we have spoken by God's grace about the very first line and the first day and also the second day of the creation of God. And if you've missed, please click on the channel name and watch. It has the testimony of Jesus and his oneness with the Father that is shown, particularly in the second day. It is awesome. You've got to hear it. It is really awesome wonderful and all praise to God alone understand if you watch this and God helps you to understand and stay firm in him remember we read and we've spoken thereof we read in revelations that the book of revelations is the disclosure the word revelations ties with disclosure it is the disclosure of Jesus Christ God is disclosing to us Jesus means God's salvation God is disclosing to us his salvation and Christ ties with the anointed the Christos is the anointed and he's anointed Anointing was to die. It is the revelation of the salvation of God in his anointed who died. Daniel 9 26 also speaks thereof. Our salvation comes through the death of Jesus, and that prophecy is written in the creation account. The wind is blowing a little bit, so we're going to move inside and carry on speaking about this. But it's incredible in the coming forth of the third day, in the coming of the, the greenery, in the coming of life, there is a prophecy. That is mind-blowing. Recapping briefly, so far we've read Genesis 1 verse 1. In the beginning, God has created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Creator is the Redeemer. The one that breathed out his breath is the one that gives us life. As in Colossians we have read, God has delivered us from the darkness. And we have seen that in monument to God, when Jesus breathed out, the darkness that was on the earth disappeared. We read in the beginning that God has created. God has created in, and that word for beginning, briefly recapping, speaks of the first principle, the first fruit, the first to, to rise. The chiefest one is Jesus. He was the first to come up. He rose on the day of the first fruit. And his testimony is in creation. Please, if you must consider watching, it will help you to understand where we are now in this prophecy. In the first day, we found that there was this abyss. Now, speaking on prophecy level, right? Yes, of course, it, the, the, the days listed testify the creation. But in each day is written the creation in Messiah of our salvation. So we have this condition is given. The condition was a condition of darkness. We have a situation where the earth was void and without form. And recapping briefly, the earth ties with the dry land where we can live, where we can dwell, the place that ties with the way. So the way was void. The way was in, in that without form a state of confusion. Because there was a similar condition, there was darkness upon the face of the deep. What is that? Beloved, in these two words and as well as in the face, we find that the face ties with a countenance, all right, according, suit, suiting, befitting the countenance. And the deep ties with an abyss of uproar. It's also in the tie of that. So there was a state of a deep uproar, an abyss, a deep level of uproar. And befitting that, right, over the face of the, the countenance, befitting that, there was the darkness, there was the death and sorrow in the word ties in the Hebrew there. So there was a state, a situation of death and sorrow that befitted the countenance of this depth of uproar, the depth of the rebellion, the depth of the sin against God. After the fall, we see that again, right? Because of the sin of mankind, because of the abyss, there was a darkness, there was a death verdict, there was sorrow and misery that befitted the sin and the fall of man. And there was a problem, beloved, because the, the way, the earth, 
was void. We had no way to God. We were trapped. We were trapped in darkness because of our sin. And we find in Colossians that it is God that has saved us from our darkness. God has saved us from the death verdict that befits the abyss of our sin. And there it moves into this awesome declaration that the Spirit of God, and in that word the Spirit, the breath, the breathing out of God, the breath of God that was moving upon the face, upon the countenance of the waters. Right? So in Jesus, He's the water of life. The breath of God came and He breathed out. And after that has happened, we find that God said, let there be light and there was light. And we have seen that in monument to God, when Jesus breathed out, the darkness that was on the earth disappeared. It is wondrous what God is doing. We find that God ordained that the Passover feast must be celebrated and it is planned according to the time of the moon because the moon had to be full the night of, of the, the death of Messiah because then the brightest light is visible. God is using the sun and the moon to speak to us the testimony of Jesus. Please, if you've missed, consider watching what the sun and the moon are saying. According to Psalm 19, they are saying something profoundly wise, and they are. And it is something that's declared day unto day and night unto night. It's incredible. The sun rises. That's the peculiar thing that the sun is doing constantly. It goes down before it comes up again. Beloved, it is incredible. We've spoken about it. And it's so wonderful to hear so many people. They love that time. I remember as a child, it, it was the most peaceful time of day to me to sit and watch and watch the sheep and the flock come. And that peaceful, almost golden time, just before the sun goes down and then the sky turns all red and the light goes into the darkness. And then it comes up again in the morning and there is that freshness. Beloved, this is the testimony of Messiah that is communicated. He is not pleased. One can't even think like that. This has nothing to do with looking at the sun as if that's him. It's not him. We may never look to the sun and pray and worship anything that has his testimony in, but God is the creator and he's using the sun and the moon for signs. He's speaking in his creation and it helps you to know that the Bible is true. Just like Psalm 19 said that it is a testimony that is carried, it's carried day unto day and night unto night, that's carried day unto day to the ends of the earth. It speaks of the one that wore the bright mantle in his death going down before coming up again, glorious, like the groom victorious. He laid with our death verdict, beloved, and he was able to rise from it. And that's the prophecy of Bethlehem Ephrata. And then God said, let there be light. And there was light. We have life by him. He called the light day. That word in the Hebrew for day ties to with birthing. In other words, he rose. He's the first to birth. And now we can also come in. We can also be birthed. He has opened our tomb and we can come out. And the darkness he called night. Beloved, it is so beautiful because in this night word, it means that the darkness, remember that was the, the death and the sorrow that was befitting the face over the countenance of that sin, that abyss, that depth of rebellion that we brought over ourselves by being sinners. Beloved, he changed when he died and rose. He changed our verdict, taking it on himself. And God thus divided the light from the darkness. He divided the rising from the death. And he said that the death will now be called the night. And night means this twisting this returning loop, he twisted our verdict by taking the death. And therefore, he, in his twisting, made it like a loop to return to rising. He's the only one that could do that. We can't rise. If we take the death verdict in our own names, we are guilty. We will not rise. But he could. He is the sinless saint one of God. He's the one whose testimony is written in creation by the creator. Remember who's the breather out of life? In the Eli Yahu, the Elijah testimony, God is God. The God of Genesis 1 is the God of Genesis 2. And what did God do? In the Yahu abbreviated name of God, he breathed out his breath to give us the dustling, those destined to be nothing, to die, us, because of our sin. He gives us life. 
It is in him. Jesus' name is God is salvation. God is our salvation, not us. And we find, just like God is the one that created this awesome creation, God is the one that wrote this testimony of Jesus in the creation account as well. The Creator is the Redeemer. We live by God in His grace alone. Just like our life on the earth comes not by our works but by His. Therefore we find in monument to Himself, God has given us Jesus. When Jesus breathed out, when God's salvation breathed out, His Spirit being in the one who is the waters of life. When He breathed out, the darkness was gone and God said, Let there be light and He rose. And therefore, the night comes, the twisting loop comes to be moving into the day. And we find that that principle, that chief principle of the first fruit, remember God created in the beginning, that word ties with this principle, principle chiefest one, the first fruit one. In Jesus, who rose because he did that, now we can too. And there was night and there was day. There was his going down and there was his rising. That's the principle. His death and rising brings the life to us. The book of life ties with his death and rising. It's in the papyrus plant the word Biblos is derived from. The papyrus plant in the making of paper has that death and rising testimony there as well. It is by that that we have life and therefore we find that the day are ordained to be like that, starting in the night and moving into the day. Because he died and he rose. And we see in the, in the going down of the sun this redness. Messiah's blood is our salvation. And he rose. And now because of that principle, so can we. You can't depart, beloved. He is the only way. God is salvation. He's our answer. And then by God's grace we've spoken about the second day, which is incredible, it helps us to understand again the tie between Jesus and God and the water above and below this firmament, this firmament, this firm structure to give us support. It's awesome. And we are under that. And he divided in his midst, the waters was cut in the midst by this pounding, this hammering, this tribulation to expand in the Hebrew for that word for firmament. Jesus took the pounding and the waters below the sun was submitted underneath it by the Father that was in control above the pounding. Jesus took the wrath of God to expand, to give us a hiding place. It is the prophecy of the sleeping groom. Remember, the groom that slept, he is her cover. He is suffering, he is her firmament and she is hidden therein. To be able to come forth because he has died. Messiah, to him death is but sleep. He is able to rise. His side was pierced by the Roman soldier's sword. He took the death verdict and therefore we don't have to. So we are freed from our darkness, from our verdict. From our death and sorrow verdict. That is appropriate and befitting to the abyss of our rebellion and sin. But God was our answer. He is our only answer. He loves you. He's awesome. And then we find that God called the firmament. Remember what the firmament is? We've spoken thereof in the previous video as well. The firmament is this structure to support, this firmness. We, we can hear that in the word in the English, but in the Hebrew we find it's actually a beating, a hammering, a type of suffering, tribulation to expand. It brings into mind almost like metal that's being hit and being broadened and becoming wide to cover. He suffered and died to give us a firm shield. It's incredible. God called this firmament heaven. His death testimony. Remember he said that the temple, the temple, he said that's like his body. His body was going down, beaten, to expand, to give us a hiding place, a shelter therein. It's the same prophecy that we find in Genesis 2, the bride hidden in the sleeping room. And there we are, hidden in him. And he, like that temple, Solomon's temple was cast down, remember? And then it came back again. He died and he rose. And in his death 
testimony we are hidden. The sleeping groom, the brides in the groom who slept, side being pierced by the Roman soldier's sword. We are in the temple, we can enter in under his death testimony, we can rise and stand before God, covered by him. We don't have to die. We can come in the presence of God because he did it in the stead of us. He rose. It in the firmament. He says that the firmament, the suffering, the death testimony is called heaven, the dwelling, the abode of God. By him who died, we can have access to God. We can go to heaven. God is incredible. The book of life ties with his death testimony. You cannot depart, beloved. You cannot say that everything else that mankind can come up with, including the works of man or atheism or whatever, is now equal to what Jesus has done. Jesus means the salvation of God. You cannot make man equal to what God has done and think that you are still safe, that you are standing there under the firmament of his death and rising, written in his book of life. He is the only way, exactly as he said. He said, I am the way and the life and the truth, and no one goes to the Father but by me, and it is true. We cannot go in our own names. We are sinful. We are in this abyss. We are having befitting darkness. Because of what we have done, we are guilty. And only God, only the Spirit of God that moved in the one who is the water of life, who died and rose and was able to rise because he's not guilty of the verdict that he took, could give us the firmament, could give us heaven, give us the way. God is incredible. And we find that in the next we read in the closure of the second day once more, and the evening and the morning were the second day. Again, it is emphasized every day we read the testimony of Jesus is in every day of the creation. And we, we find that it, it, it emphasizes the evening comes before the morning. The death testimony is before the rising and it is his. He did that, he's the only one that could. He is prophesied in the burning bush. Remember the bush that had the fire and yet remained green. Green is a sign of life. Because of his identity. He is the breather out of life. He has life. His testimony is in Bethlehem Ephrata. We've spoken thereof. The house of the bread broken in the Paraspo Ephrata. And Bethlehem, the house of the bread, the Lechem, the battle of God. In the battle of God, he took the fire. He took the wrath of God. as close in Ezekiel, the fire. And he rose. He could come forth. He's the one with the tie with everlasting. You cannot make him equal to any other thing that mankind can come up with. It brings down God and uplifts man to the level of God because Jesus is God's salvation. Please, beloved, may God open your eyes so that you can stay true. He's helping us by his word that he, through his spirit alone, opens. And if this is helping you, praise God alone. He loves you. Then moving into... The next line, we find that God is separating the waters under the heaven, thus under the firmament, to be gathered into one body and to so forth and so give the dry land, beloved. And it was so. In other words, the, the waters under that firmament, we've spoken thereof in the previous video, it's incredible. So there was this one, there's this one body of waters that was divided in the midst, that was cut, all right, in his midst. And then the firmament was there. And there was water under the firmament and water above. Beloved, this firmament, remember, this firm structure that was beaten and hammered to expand. We find that the death testimony of Messiah is therein. He was cut in his death testimony and the waters below, that's one with the waters above, remember? The waters below, in the word below, it means it's suppressed, it's made low, it is going under. He was suppressed and made low. The sun was suppressed by the death testimony that was under control of the waters above. The waters above, the Father, well, he judges, and the judgment, the bounding went to the sun. He took it in the midst of himself. You cannot make him equal to any other. His testimony is written in the name of God given Moses. The God of Abram, Isaac, and Jacob, therein is the testimony of our salvation, beloved. Our being gathered, we being added into heaven, we being added into life. 
so that we can rejoice being set free like Isaac was taken off the altar because of the one that died in the stead, that one that stood with thorns in the thorn bush, Messiah standing with a crown of thorns going into the tribulation. Like that one that was provided taking the fire in the stead of Isaac so that Isaac can be set free, rejoice. There's a prophecy of the Christian people that accepted Messiah and rejoices because he died in the stead of us. The firmament in the midst of the waters. The father letting the, the hammering, the pounding to expand, letting the death testimony suppress and make low the son to give us a firm support structure in the midst of himself. God is incredible. And thus, because of this gathering together in one body, the gathering of Jesus, that is our cover, the groom that has slept wherein we are hidden, therefore came the dry land. Therefore came in this word the way. Because Jesus died, we have a way to heaven. We don't have to take the death verdict because he has taken it in the midst of himself. In the prophetic now, in verse 11, And God said, Let the earth, in this word, we tie with a firm ground, the way, right, the place where, where we can live, the way to heaven. Let's let the way, the way to God, which is through the death of Jesus, let the way bring forth in this herb and grass its tender greenery, tender life. Beloved, let the way in Jesus bring you life. The tender green shoot that's glistening in this herb, Set with seeds, in other words, set with the ability to bring forth even more. To testify, Jesus, beloved. To bring forth in the seed, children. To bring forth and testify so that others can also know and have life. To be fruitful. We find, and the fruit tree, the fruit bearing tree. And remember, we must bear fruit. We must share the testimony of Jesus and do what pleases God. Because we love him. And we find in this word for tree, right, it has ties with wood, it has ties with timber that can be used to fasten and to shut, right, and it's, it's going up. So it's fruit giving, it's life bearing, it brings an increasing and it's like timber that can fasten and shut and make secure. We must testify Jesus. In him we are fastened. In him we are secured. And we must carry the testimony so that many more can come in. We must bring fruit. We must follow the testimony of Jesus. He's the first fruit. He fell into the ground and rose. And we, following him, may have persecution in our lives, but because of him, we will rise. When we die under his name, we will come up again. And we must bring forth a great harvest. We must testify so that many more can come in and have life in the way to heaven, which is his testimony. And, we and God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. Remember this, beloved. There's prophecy here. That it was evening and it was morning and it was the third day. Thus, again, this growing dark. In evening it's the time of growing dark and we find that in the evening that word in the Hebrew ties with making a pledge with exchanging with bartering Jesus is the one that pledged his life to die in the stead of us that exchanged himself in our place he bartered for us he paid the price by his death by his going into darkness by his dying it was evening and it was morning and he rose. He's the first to come up. He's the first fruit. And in following in his footsteps, so will we. He is the one that brings in this great harvest and we must testify him to bring in more. The earth is yielding life. The way is yielding greenery, greenery, soft, tender life. We will rise because of him. And it was the day. The word for three used here ties with a great measure, a great portion. Remember the portion of the Messiah that would be cut? Remember the three of Jesus who died? The great measure for recompense, the price owed, was his deathbed of three. He's the chiefest one that paid the price to bring recompense, his deathbed, the great portion, the measure of three. He paid the three the great measure of recompense to bring forth 
birthing to bring forth life. Third day testifies Jesus. It's incredible to measure of recompense because in the Hebrew letter of three, the Gimel, there is also a tie with recompense. Great measure three. of the anointed Messiah. Verb kamal, which means to deal and recompense. Kamal means to make recompense. In his death, in his growing dark, in his bartering, in his evening and morning, in his death and rising, he did kamal. He did make recompense. He paid the price by his death for us. And we find in kamal, it also ties with a camel. And there's a prophecy, a reason why, why we find that Elijah was in the camel's hair. If you'd like, consider watching, but the garb of Elijah also is shown in John. It's incredible. It ties with the testimony of him being, Jesus being the burden bearer. And in Elijah, we find Eliyahu. It's a testimony of God, who is God, that carried the burden. And in the camel, the word that with camel, gamal, to recompense, we find the camel is the one that moves in extreme heat that can move in places where the other animals don't, the one that can close and open nostrils and face the storm. Messiah is the one that could die and rise, that could breathe out and in at will, that carries our burden and move through the extremity of death and rose. It was evening and he bartered and he exchanged and it was morning and he The rose. evening comes before the morning. And the evening, the death of Jesus and the morning Jesus being risen, like birthing, like coming up. The third, the great measure of recompense of the the great measure of recompense of the anointed Messiah who was anointed to be cut to die in order to bring forth the day. And therefore came the night that's now a twisting loop. That's now the name of our darkness that we couldn't get out of, and it became the birthing, the day of rising which is fulfilled in him praise god and god said let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from night and let them be for signs god then made two great lights the greater light to rule the day the birthing and the lesser night to rule the night this twisting loop and he made the stars also and he set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth on the way there is prophecy that is staggeringly beautiful that also ties with Daniel's wise there with the stars that ties with Psalm 19 of the testimony of the Sun and the moon that we will again be speaking of in the subsequent video God is incredible and he's giving us in his creation and in the word on his creation account the testimony of salvation because Eli is Yahweh, God is God. The creator is the redeemer. The one that created is the one that breathed out his breath so that we can have life. The way became filled with greenery, with tender yielding life because of him who breathed out his breath. God loves you. His word is frighteningly wonderful. If you have missed, consider watching the Book of Life prophecy May God strengthen you to understand that in him alone is our life and his death. He's entering into darkness and rising up again is the only answer whereby we can live. God loves you. He's awesome. Praise him and share.